Mr. Dirk Kraus. Yes, hi. Um, you're here with the Schmidt. Yes. A very lucky man. <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> um, so, is it in manufacture now? Yes, it's uh, released this year. We shipped uh, some of these units to happy customers. So it's officially released and it's no prototype anymore. It's now, it's official. <laughs> Awesome. And um, you, you very kindly said that you would just sort of take us through some of the architecture, some of the insides, and I'm be really happy to see that. Yes, I will do. It's a, yeah, it's a more complex analog uh, polyphonic synthesizer with eight voices. The Schmidt had DCOs, four oscillators, and all different. Oscillator 1, oscillator 2, 3, and 4. This is a real special one because they had six uh, analog rectangle waveforms, they are all ring modulated to each other. So it's a really noisy and metallic uh, aspect for the sound. I mean, obviously, you know, everybody's expecting large, lush pads and things, but it's capable of an awful lot more, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, of course, it's a, you are able to make Toto horns and OB patches like that. But it's a lot of more possibilities because you have aftertouch, you have velocity to, to most of the things. And uh, a great aspect is the Schmidt has on the back four inputs, you can see. And you are able to patch what you want, like your Döpfer LFO or your Make Noise Mask. CV inputs. Yes. they are. The inputs and continuous controller inputs also for pedal. I've tried an MP201 from MOOC to have synced sample and hold to a lot of uh, things and that's great. It's it's real a modular aspect on this. Part so could we have a listen to some of the raw waves? I mean you show yes, us a yes, little bit. Yes, of course. Uh, so let's start with a simple patch. The, the structure is you have in this group to decide which filter you want to use. If no lid is on, no, no, no sound, no fun. So we start with VCF1 and on this side you decide which oscillator you are fed in the VCF1. So we have now oscillator 1 you can choose between. And so now it's, the rect it's only the rectangle wave from oscillator 1. It's normal. Then you have a pulse width. That's spe another special thing. You have three LFOs separately for every oscillator with pulse width modulation. Just for so pulse width? Only for pulse width. And th that's not enough. <laughs> we have more LFOs on board. But this is now for... You hear it's possible to do really crazy stuff. Then we have a normal sawtooth. And again, the next special is a pulse modulated sawtooth. So now you have two, and they are also, you can modulate it. Ah, okay, so it's like, a, are you modulating the pulse width of the triangle, or is it a combination of waves? No, it, this is only, it's not a combination, it's only two, same time, uh, ah. two times the same sawtooth, and then you can modulate it. Ah, yes, got you. And the next one will be a special, it's a multi-pulse width. You have four rectangle forms, waveforms. They are selectable here in different combinations and you got uh, another two LFOs to modulate this. So here, here you can uh, decide the space of the, of the uh, rectangle and the width. And then we can start to get almost get sort of vowel-like harmonics there, don't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you, you can start to crank it up a bit. To make it maybe unlistable. But then we mustn't forget we've got eight voices of yes. all of that. So 
all of that with Can you eight voices. Are, are the LFOs synced across each of the eight voices, or do they all cycle diff at different rates? Because that's something that happens with some analog polys. Um, you are able to decide here, assigned to rate two, three. So it's possible ah, to so sync, sync the them. pulse width of all these three oscillators to the uh, rate of oscillator one. That's what, it's not MIDI syncable, right, but, it's, it's but you remember you are able to maybe fed in a synced LFO and now you can route it to this parameter and you have a synced PBM. Right, okay, that's it. So what's the, you were talking about this oscillator is sort of special, what's, the, what's, the, what's going on with oscillator 4? Okay, well, let's choose oscillator 4. Sounds like wave table almost. It sounds like yeah, it's a bit difficult that there is a written wave preset. It's not wave tables, it's six analog rectangle waveforms ring modulated after another. So and these are kept in presets and you have to switch between these combinations. You can decide if you have ring mod or more clean. And you can also you can switch between these. So you have noise for modulation. So it's a lot of noise possible. Yeah. I mean, it seems to me that we're talking about something that even as a monosynth would be really impressive. You know, to make something that maybe was just one voice would be yeah. with these oscillators because they're so unusual, right? Yeah, that, that's true. But the thing is, um, you need a lot of hardware. The, the, the main feature thing on the Schmidt is that you have your fingers on every on every point in, of the sound. And for, for a monosynth... A monosynth this big would be a bit of an overkill. <laughs> yeah, it's, nobody will pay 6,000 euro for a monosynth to, with a lot of knobs. Then uh, I think the, 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 the main feature is to use this polyphonic wise and it's a lot of things possible. Also interesting, oscillator 3 is for, for the sync option. We can try to maybe... Now it's nothing really special hearable. There's also filter uh, frequency modulation between oscillator 2 and 3. And now we need a rectangle. Familiar for sync sound. And now we are able also to modulate the pitch of the third oscillator. Or to modulate it by a special envelope, it's only for the oscillator, it's, right. it's kind of an AR. You hear? And we haven't even got to the filter yet, right? Yeah, it's only, only oscillators. To, uh, so you yeah. presumably you can tune them all into sort of very irregular intervals or whatever. I mean, they're not all fixed to the same octave. You've got uh, what are the intervals you can put between them as well? You can create all sorts of massive patches. Then I'd imagine. Yes, yes, yeah. that's that's possible. Okay, let's check the filter. Maybe uh, uh, the VCF is a MOOC style 24 dB multi mode filter. So you can fade between low pass to high pass. And you have a lot of possibilities to modulate this. You have the okay key follow, velocity, 
Maybe we try to... Try an ordinary... Yeah. <laughs> ordinary way. Oh, it's very smooth. It's interesting that you've gone for uh, four pole because, I mean, on a poly synth, two pole sounds really great on certain pads. Can you get any of that kind of going on with the, uh, the other fit, or is it all four pole action? No, it's only these bows, they are identical. These bows are 24 dB Moog style filters, but the, you have a dual filter with 12 dB. And you, have, you can switch these combinations between low pass, low pass, low pass, high pass, band pass, band pass, and... So you can get that sort of two pole kind of vibe with those, right? Yes. If you are looking for Oberheim expander style sounds, then this is your filter. It's interesting because I recently reviewed the MFB Dominion 1 and the, the flexibility yes. with the filter there. Yeah. And I just really like the sound of two pole filters. They're just, there's something unusual because yeah. you yeah, don't hear them every day. It, it's, it's great. Maybe let's, let's try this. These are, normally it's parallel, but it's also possible to fed in the dual filter to VCF1. Right. So you have it in serial. Right. But you, you are fancy to listen to the dual filter, right? Well, both. I mean, <laughs> well, while we're here, let's listen to anything. Okay. It's a bit different because you have the cutoff for both. Yeah. And this is the space. The separation. The right. separation between. And here you are. You are. Um, you oh, are different resonance amounts. Yes. You, that's you really can, interesting because that makes that makes a lot of between. difference. And also in this case you have an own LFO with with, with your own rate, all the same in the VCF. So every filter head is own LFO. So I'm a bit disappointed. There's a whole row here that hasn't got any knobs <laughs> in. I mean, what was he thinking? <laughs> yeah, maybe you can. Uh, Buy some knobs. <laughs> put some stickers on it. Yes, put some stickers on it, yeah, of course. But you see, in, in this row, there we have some knobs, and right. these especially you can uh, synchronize. If you switch this, then you have the same uh, parameters chosen then on the dual filter one. Right. Yeah. Uh, so the separation thing, that was uh, that, the Oscar had dual filter separation. That's the sort of classic filter separation yes. side, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, I think um, maybe Stefan was inspired by, by this to, uh, to choose this. Right. It's interesting that um, there are no effects on this, are there? And it's sort of, it must have been very tempting to maybe put a delay or a chorus. I guess you wouldn't need a chorus yeah, with this yeah. many. We, we have... We have a great uh, release, sometimes it sounds like a reverb, but there's no effects in it. Ah uh, yes, I remember you played that before and it really does sound like there's extra. So in terms of the VCA as well, I mean, it, it, you were driving the filter. Is that it, does it have that effect where you you if you increase the amount of gain of the oscillators into the filter, do you end up with that kind of drive or? It, no, it's no, it's no. Uh, the only drive distortion possibility is in the dual filter. You have the possibility to to thicken it up a bit, but it's not a classical overdrive right. or or uh, a bit crasher thing. It's. Um, the Schmidt thing. We, yes, the Schmidt, we try to not distort it. Right. <laughs> I mean, cause the thing is, we're listening very much to kind of I mean, many monophonic voices, but when you start playing big pads, I mean, the output is yes, we can, vast, isn't if, it? If you like, we can...
So are you doing some patch design for this? Is that part of yes, what you're... Yes, I made two banks for it. 128 sounds each bank and we have eight banks. So it should be a lot of sounds for everybody to be happy with it. It's interesting, it's interesting with a synthesizer of this magnitude there's because essentially, you know, some of the, the capabilities are in there are kind of bordering on the modular, and there's a whole notion of should you, should you not have presets and should you, and it's kind of because in many ways it just cries out to be tweaked. So, wh where do you start from when you're starting a patch? It's it's different. Um, I start most of the time with the top uh, VCF, and then I start and try to develop. I've used a lot the multi. PVM because it's, it's new for me and uh, it's a lot of flexible modulation things are possible. Also Oscillator 3 with a sync and the, the FM is, uh, is great for, for more metallic, uh, not so obvious polyphonic sounds. And in terms of multi timbrality, I mean, can you access the voices separately that way? And, you know, to, so obviously for some, eight is plenty, but, you know, you might want. Yes, we have multi, multi mode, so you can. You have eight voices and eight single outputs. If you fancy, you can do eight monophonic sounds and uh, play it separately, multi stacked with separate MIDI channels, then this, this works yeah. fine. Oh, excellent. So what do you find, I mean, you, you've been playing with it, presumably in your own environment. I mean, how does it slot into the things that you make creatively? I mean, where do you find it, it sits? In the meantime, it's uh, nearly my uh, only polyphonic. So uh, I, I'm using it for uh, textures. I've tried to, to create that not so, so common. And uh, if I need a Uno 60 pad, then I, I use my Uno 60, but uh, often I, I, I see that uh, I start with a normal sound and then I start tweaking here a bit and there a bit to make it more special and you have a lot of options to do this. Absolutely. So um, perhaps we could listen to a couple of more sounds that you've programmed from your bank, if that's okay. Yes, of, of course we can do. Um, Actually, this pad was it's one of the factory Jupiter 8 sounds, and I recreated it, and it sounds really, really near. So it's, it's great. Also, Lovely. I, I imagine um, Mono Unison has got to be pretty awesome on this thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's really fat. Let me search for an uh, also. That's unusual. That sounds almost like digital. You are able to create, because the oscillators are really stable if you like, and if you don't like, you switch it off and then you are... ...made it more detuned, de more analog sounding, but it, you are able to make really precise digital sounding sounds. You want to listen to an... Unison D tune. That's not unison, no, no. it's only, but, but it sounds pretty big. Yeah. That's 
only one oscillator. Oh, only? Only. <laughs> I think any more and then we'd have the police here. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> It's a lot of analog uh, bus on under yes, the hood. Definitely. So maybe. Have a crafty yeah, reference yeah. in any any synthesizer. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you have you have um, a kind of this. <laughs> Joe, that's fantastic. I mean, is there any other aspects of the synth that you kind of feel you, we should we should know about, or are we uh, are we are we close to the end of what we can? Yeah, I, I think it's for uh, you. You have to to start to get familiar with it because the, the structure, the architecture is not like the normal one for a polyphonic synth so you start on the left side and on the right side okay we have the same fl workflow here but um, yeah the LFOs are so separated and gives you a lot of flexibility then um, you have to yeah and I guess the parallel filters are a bit kind of confusing to people who maybe haven't worked with that kind of thing yeah before. I, I remember uh, or I recognized these days on the music messer that the people are a bit frightened before the synthesizer so they start playing a bit and then turning a knob and it's the wrong one and say so, oh because he is cut off why is nothing happened so yeah you have to be uh, you have to fi find out how the filters are uh, related to each other and I'm guessing if you've either got one of these synthesizers or have access to one, then you're going to spend some quality time with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I think when you buy it, then you take the manual and uh, maybe separate yourself in a, in a cabin and then start working with it. So uh, people can order them, but are they coming through dealers or is it uh, via... You no, it's directly from EMC, the German distributor. You can order directly. It's only a production run of 25 units and nearly 21 are sold. So, so you have to, I have be, to be quick. Yes, you have to be quick. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. <laughs>